The following program presents principles designed to promote good health. It should not take the place of personal professional care. Viewers should always consult their qualified health practitioner before considering alternative treatment. In protein, they're the highest in calcium and they're the highest in iron. And I think that's why they probably make it into a milk now and uh, you get almond milk. If someone has a baby, I would never suggest they give the almond milk from the shop to the baby. It's not formulated for a baby. In fact, if a baby cannot have breast milk, the milk that is the closest to breast milk is goat's milk. So if a mother cannot feed the baby, the goat's milk is the best. There are a lot of babies who have ax eczema, asthma, ear problems, all because they're on cow's milk. Now cow's milk is perfect milk for baby calves. Did you hear that? That's it. And the milk that's in the formula is uh, homogenized and pasteurized and if homogenized and pasteurized milk is given to a baby calf did you know that calf will die so it is not the best milk for babies so if a mother cannot breastfeed the goat's milk is the next best I do know a mother who gave her baby carrot sorry and apple juice instead of milk now this baby could not have any type of milk could not even handle her milk and this baby had a skin disease where the, the skin was just falling off every day. Um, there were layers of skin coming off the baby, had a terrible skin condition. And the naturopath put this baby on carrot, sorry, and apple juice. That's 80% carrot, 10% celery, 10% apple. And the baby thrived on that. So it's often called the vegetarian's milk. Now in Fiji, Traditionally, they've always given babies boo juice. Now, boo juice is the milk in the immature coconut, not the mature coconut, the immature coconut, because in the immature coconut, all the nutrients are in the, in the fluid. And if you open an immature coconut, you get a thin, soft, white jelly lining. That's the immature coconut. And all the nutrients are in there. But in a mature coconut, all the nutrients are on the thick, hard, white uh, wall. And that's what coconut cream and coconut milk and coconut oil are made out of that thick coat. But I have known a mother to give her baby almond milk and she would uh, blend up the almonds and dates with a bit of water and strain it and the baby went well on that. But if a mother can't feed her baby, She's best to go to the uh, goat, goat's milk, and if she can't go to that, it's probably almost best that she'd be under a nutritionist just to get the right milk for that baby. I've been uh, helping a lady in New York, and her little baby has two teeth, and this little one's 18 months old. And he's just, they had him on huge amounts of food, and his stomach just swells, and his arms are thin. And I said, the baby should be still having milk because the baby only has a few teeth. So she's had to cut the food right back and give the baby most of the nutrients via milk. And she's been giving the carrot, sorry, and apple juice to this little one. And his stomach has gone right down. And sometimes that can happen. They can say, he's so thin, so you give heaps amount of food, but the gut has to heal before the, the stomach can handle that food. Anyway, they're quite excited how the baby's beginning to respond. So every case is different. But almond is called the king of all nuts. It's the most alkaline nut. It's the highest in protein, the highest in calcium, and the highest in iron. Brazil nuts are also an alkaline nut. Now, Brazil nuts are phenomenally high in selenium, and selenium is a very important mineral. You see, the, the, um, the thyroid needs selenium because it needs selenium to convert iodine into thyroxine. 
Now, mercury has an affinity for selenium. So if people have mercury fillings in their mouth, that can gobble up all their selenium. You only need five Brazil nuts a day to get all the selenium that you need for a day. And even though in Australia the selenium levels in the soil are very low, we get our Brazil nuts from Brazil. <laughs> and of course in Brazil the, the land is okay. All your seeds, that's uh, sesame seeds, sunflowers, uh, chia seeds, flax seeds, pumpkin seeds, they are also on the alkaline list. The most acid forming substance you can put in your body, I'm sorry I cannot call it a food because I consider it a poison, and that is the pure crystallized acid that's been extracted from the sugar cane plant. It's a highly concentrated substance, whether it be white, whether it be tan, or whether it be brown. And one of the problems, well, another problem with sugar today is it's highly sprayed because the bugs attack it, because the sugar cane is grown in the same ground again and again and again, so the ground is very depleted in nutrients. So there are many reasons why sugar should never be eaten. And there is no need for us to eat sugar. We've got beautiful sweeteners like honey, maple syrup. Uh, you've also got coconut sugar or palm sugars. That's just the crystallized nectar from the palm flower. So there are, are many uh, sweeteners so you don't have to go to the poison. Uh, meat, meat is very high in the, alkal in the acid Minerals, when meat breaks down in the body, it gives off a high sulfur waste, and this creates a very acid condition. In his book, The China Study, Dr. Colin Campbell, he explains that in detail. He says he could turn cancer on and off like a switch, depending on how much meat and dairy products he was giving the rats. The book is called The China Study because in China, they're able to compare the city Chinese to the country Chinese who are still eating the native food, so they get this clear comparison there. And the cancer rates in the cities are about the same as in the industrialised nations. Your hybridised wheat, the hybridisation of the wheat created, uh, it, it changed the molecular structure of the wheat so that there are more acid-forming minerals. Aged cheese, Notice we didn't give you any blue vein cheese to nibble on. What's the blue in the blue vein cheese? It's mold. Mold is very acid, so there's your, your acid environment. But I'll put over here pH of 7 of fresh cheeses. So this is feta. This is uh, ricotta and cottage. These are fresh cheeses, so they don't have the acid effect. I myself choose not to, although sometimes if I'm travelling and there's not much to offer, I might have a little feta. But you can get some very nice goat and even sheep fetters today. Also caffeine, all your caffeine foods and drinks create an, an acid environment. Alcohol, it's not a food but it creates an acid environment. Tobacco is not a food, but it creates an acid environment. All your other grains, all your other legumes, and all your other nuts, other than the ones on the alkaline side. Now to maintain the 6.5 environment at the cellular level, we should be having 20 to 30% acid forming foods and 70 to 80 percent alkaline forming foods. Now this 20 to 30 percent ideally should be from this little section here. How many people today are eating 90 percent acid? 10 percent alkaline? Mm-hmm. This is the diet I just uh, described before. Cereal and toast for breakfast, sandwiches for lunch, pasta for tea, maybe biscuits, cakes, mid-morning, mid-afternoon. That's almost 100% acid. 
The easiest way to alkalize your food program is to eat more vegetables, more greens. Start pursuing the other grains. That's the easiest way to do it. That's the easiest way to keep the balance. One lady said, oh, no, rice is here. I said, yes, rice isn't bad. You need a little acid. Walnuts are here. Yeah, walnuts are great. I love them. And you need a little acid. You see, it's all a matter of balance. And if you're having a lot of fresh veggies, greens, have a highly alkaline diet, you can handle a little bit of the acid ones. Macadamia lots, how I love them. They're perfectly fine. You need a little acid. It's just the balance. So one of the easiest ways is to be mindful of more veggies. If you don't have a yeast problem, fruits, over to these 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 are uh, legumes, chickpeas. I love chickpeas. We had them for lunch yesterday. I had uh, kidney beans for lunch today. Kidney beans and chickpeas are over here, but you eat them with lots of veggies and salad. It brings a nice balance. So it's all a matter of balance. Now the gardener, he can play with the pH of his soil to get different effects in different vegetables. Are you familiar with the hydrangea plant? The hydrangea plant is a big bush and it has big flowers and every flower has lots of little flowers in it. And sometimes you'll see a hydrangea plant and the flowers are pink. Sometimes they'll be a rich dark pink like magenta. Sometimes the flowers will be purple. Sometimes the flowers will be blue. Now they're not different types of hydrangea plants the gardener plays with the pH of the soil to get different coloured flowers. So just as the gardener plays with the pH of the soil to get different coloured flowers, you can play with the pH of your cell and get different health, sickness results happening in your body. As I showed you recently, drastically dropping, even wiping out the nightshades, going to a more alkaline diet, checking the air in your home, having sun every day, stopping all the acids, or all this acid group anyway, going to bed earlier, exercising every day, being mindful of this equation, drinking adequate water. The best time to drink water is between meals because if you drink water with your meal, that's a good way to dilute your stomach acid. Remember, you don't want to dilute that. You want that nice and sparky so that you can break down your protein. We should stop drinking half an hour before a meal and resume drinking about an hour and a half after a meal. That is ideal. Now, if someone's thirsty after the meal, by all means have a mouthful. That's not going to dilute too much. But if you sit to your meal well hydrated, you should not need to drink large, amount, large amounts with your meal. And that's another habit so common today, isn't it? To drink large amounts with the meal. So being mindful of the acid alkaline, you can play with the health status of your body. Are there any questions as we close? Yes. What's the effect of apple cider vinegar? I don't use apple cider vinegar. The, the lemon has a far more alkalizing effect. The only place I advise apple cider vinegar is on the toes if someone has tinea or athlete's foot. There are a lot of claims about apple cider vinegar, but all of those claims you can apply to the lemon. Uh, a habit that we have at Misty Mountain Health Retreat is to put lemon in the water first thing in the morning. Lemon is one of the best liver tonics there is. And the lemons are just coming on in the trees, aren't they? As we go into winter. And if you have lemon trees and you've got an abundance, you can squeeze them all, pour them into ice cube containers, freeze them and then throw them into a little snap lock bag and keep them in the freezer. Yes? Can you drink too much soy milk? You certainly can. People say to me, what milk do you drink, Barbara? I say, I'm weaned. 
I, I eat food. I have teeth. And you see, when my children had teeth, um, they ate food. So my babies were on breast milk until they had teeth, and then slowly I didn't feed them anymore. So you definitely can drink too much soy milk because we really shouldn't be drinking soy milk. What we should be drinking is water or herb teas or maybe for a tonic effect half an hour before a meal or for an evening meal you could have a, a vegetable juice. So I personally in my home don't use soy milk. I don't use any milk. Sometimes if I make my husband an apple strudel, you can eat well, you know. I'll put a lump of coconut cream on top of that. Or maybe I'll blend up cashews to a fine powder and then put a tin of pears in natural juice in it and blend it again, make a beautiful cream out of that. So that's more how I would use it. Some say, well, what about mashed potato? When I mash potato, I try and cook the potatoes in a little bit of water so by the time they're cooked there's no water left. And then I pour olive oil and Celtic salt and mash and mash and you get a beautiful mashed potato. Any other questions? Yeah? Questions of acid, beet sugar and cane sugar? Beet sugar and cane sugar basically both come under this. Yeah. Yeah. Now, sugar cane is over here, but when you extract that pure acid out, it becomes over here. And the, the antacid medication, now just think for a moment, if someone takes antacid, what's going to happen to the acid in their stomach? It wipes it out, so it, yeah, it interferes with digestion because it inhibits uh, protein digestion and that person can suffer from um, protein deficiency because if you don't have the enzymes in your gut to break down the protein, it can't get into the blood. On the first note I said your gastrointestinal tract is a hollow tube and anything that goes into that hollow tube doesn't become part of you or me until it gets broken down to tiny substances and absorbed into the blood. So if you haven't got the enzymes the acids to break down your food, it can't get into the blood. And so the person can suffer from malnutrition. Is this, um, taken cause of it's taken usually because of reflux, um, the acid coming up. And so in that, you've just got to restore that valve. You see, by taking antacids, is like shooting all of the horses because they keep getting out of the gateway. Just shut the gate. And that, that's all you have to do here is, is shut that gate. Now, another man told me he'd been, on, uh, he'd been on Nexium or the equivalent for 25 years and he started taking cayenne pepper. Now, if you take cayenne pepper, it, it's that the stimulating effect in your stomach wakens all your gastric glands and you produce nice amounts of gastric acid. And what he did, because he increased his gastric acid, his food was starting to be breaking down properly and he had no more reflux. Some people have reflux because they haven't got enough uh, acid in the stomach to break down the food and that food starts to ferment and sometimes that's the acid that's coming up. I have yet to meet a person with too much acid in their stomach. It's, it's almost a, uh, a fallacy, this, this high acid in the stomach. Yes? Yep. What's the best time to take cayenne pepper? The best time to take cayenne pepper is just before your meal or on your meal because that's when you'll stimulate digestion. Don't take it before you go to bed or you'll be... Because <laughs> it'll wake everything up. Question? Okay, very good question. Uh, babies one and a half, and uh, how many teeth? One year and two months. He's only got his front teeth, so, and he's eating lots of food. I would stop all grain, wean him off all the grain. He can have vegetables, he can have sweet potato and broccoli, all the vegetables, but not grain yet. 
and the molars until the four cusps are through on all the teeth, only then will the tylen come through. Yes? Yeah, what type of milk? Goat's milk's the best, and you can get carry care goat's milk formulas, which some mothers find that very, very helpful. It's very easy, too. Or you can, if you've got a juice, a carrot, sorry, and apple juice at that age is fine. And the babies quite like it because it's nice with that little bit of. 80% uh, carrot, 10% apple, 10% celery can replace the milk. Mm -hmm. Now, I have had some women start to beat themselves up over this. One woman started crying, said, I've done everything wrong. I said, you must not beat yourself up because you were doing the best f that you knew. And there's a lovely verse in the Bible. It's Acts 30, verse 17. It says, God winks at our ignorance. So should we. Got that? <laughs> but today's another day and you can start doing it right. There's a question up there. What's the effect of having citrus with your meal? If you have the citrus lemon with your meal, it uh, helps digestion. If you have orange with your meal, and I would have um, orange, say, with the fruit meal, it's perfectly fine. How about orange juice? You shouldn't have a lot of juice with the meal. And some people um, work all day, no time to drink, sit down to their meal and eat large mugs of juice with their meal. But that, that is not a good idea because there's a lot of sugar in juice. And you just um, juice an orange and it takes about three big oranges to make a whole glass of orange juice. I think juice should take the place of food. It should not, be, it should not really be done with the meal. Now, if I'm at a wedding, uh, as I was recently, and you toast the bride and you've got some lovely grape juice there, a couple of mouthfuls, to it's not a problem. You see, it's not the odd day you do it and the odd day you don't do it. It's what you do every day, every meal that has the effect on the body. Yes? I don't use grapeseed oil. It was probably about 80 years ago that they developed equipment to be able to extract oils from hard seeds. And it takes chemicals and heat to get it out. So the two oils that you can extract very easily from the flesh of the plant are the olive oil and the coconut oil. So they're the only oils that I advise. Yes? Where does fish come into it? Um, fish is a meat on the acid side. Unfortunately today there is rarely a fish you can buy that is not tainted with chemicals or poisons. Um, fish is very high. The recent fisheries testing in Australia was they could not find one fish without mercury in it. I know about three years ago they banned all fishing from Sydney Harbour because the children of the fishermen had high levels of dioxin and mercury in them. So unfortunately, because of the state of our seas and our rivers today, fish really is not a safe food. Yes? Probiotic supplements. Probiotic supplements, Probiotic supplements are great. Do you remember that uh, villi I just <laughs> drew with its thick turf wall and how a lot of it had been broken down? Well, how you can replace that thick turf wall is take, number one, a probiotic supplement. And probiotic means for life. And a probiotic supplement is best taken three quarters of an hour before breakfast, so it goes down there. And there are two herbs that can help to coat, line and seal uh, the lining of the gut. One is aloe vera bit slimy and that's exactly what your gut is and the other herb is slippery elm and as the la as the name implies when you put water with it it does go a little bit slippery and slimy but excellent for healing the lining of the gut hippocrates said let said all disease begins in the gut and when you consider what i've showed you this evening all the things that break down that that 
thick turf wall and then the different foods that can come in and further aggravate that. It uh, it's, was quite prophetic for him to say that. Yes? What causes arthritis? What causes arthritis is usually an overload of acid. And, and I just look at my dear mother, <laughs> who did not realise it, but she ate mostly from this side. Now there is a bit of genetics there. Remember, genetics loads the gun, but it is lifestyle that pulls the trigger. Yes? What sort of powder? Lotus powder. I'm not, I don't know lotus powder. Pardon? Okay. Um, I'm not familiar with the lotus powder, I'm sorry. Okay, well I'd be interested to see what its actives and its effects are, the lotus powder. Thank you for your attention tonight. Remember, um, if you've got some bigger questions, we've got, we're going to be devoting um, Sunday afternoon at 6 o'clock. Is it? No. 2 o'clock. I have to be at the airport at 6.30 from, is that right? 4.30. Sorry, I'll be on the plane at 6.30. But at, from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock, we're going to be looking at questions so we can pursue that in a bit more detail. Tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock here, I'm going to be showing you how to rewire your brain. I'm going to be showing you how your brain can get younger as you age. And... Um, Pastor William has kindly let me take the usual church service here, so there'll be, there'll be a couple of songs and a prayer and they'll be taking up an offering. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. And then we'll be going straight into how you can rewire your mind. And then tomorrow afternoon, uh, that's the 6 o'clock, isn't it? 6 till 8 o'clock, we'll be having practical demonstration on, on uh, natural remedies. So bring your pen and paper with you tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow morning to know how to rewire your brain. Please bow your heads as I close. Father in heaven, thank you so much again for this amazing body. Thank you for the knowledge on the acid alkaline, more conditions to give the body to get optimum performance out of it. I pray that each of us will be inspired, Father, to look a little differently at our body and to respect it and to look after it because it's the only one we've got. And the person who will benefit the most from giving it the right conditions, of course, is us. So may you help us, may you inspire us, and may you encourage us in this walk is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.